भुवनेश्वर इन ओडिशा कोलाघाट झारखंड केरला हरियाणा कोयम्बटूर सो राइट फ्रॉम ईस्ट to west to north to south we have participants coming in from across the country these participants will spend 50 hours collaborating intensively on software solutions based on any of one of the following verticals let me quickly read them out for you health and well being education and work opportunities agri tech food and nutrition innovative fmcg solutions crisis response social and environmental solutions governance and citizenship arts media and entertainment business resilience and work solutions multi stakeholder platforms we know that it's really really diverse and all the participants you are in for a wonderful treat because once we are finished with this wonderful hackathon all of you are going to emerge as a leader as a winner uh, to start kick off the event i would like to welcome our uh, guest for the day uh, we have mr meghdoot roy choudhury director global operations at techno india group Meghdoot is a young entrepreneur. He is a global operations head at Techno India Group, one of the largest educational conglomerate in India, and he is also the chief curator of Future Proof Hackathon. Meghdoot has been driving a new wave of experiential interdisciplinary learning for adults through a very recently established wonderful uh, organization called Offbeat CCU. It's also known as School of the Future. Uh, he also runs a co-working space called Techno Entrepreneur Surrogate Venture, and he has received. eminent young entrepreneur award at the times knowledge group uh, knowledge icon in 2018 um, megdut has studied from um, uh, uh, from france and spent a lot of time in silicon valley and israel uh, he loves his city uh, uh, city of joy kolkata and i would welcome megdut roy choudhury to kindly take the discussion ahead megdut thank you so much ravi good morning everyone to our esteemed pa panelists to our uh, super patrons who've joined us Uh, to the chairman co chairman of techno india group and on behalf of the group to all of the people who are watching us live today uh, we have uh, thousands of people watching us on the techno india group uh, page uh, it gives me a lot of pleasure and joy to announce the fact that we have the the idea that we had been working on uh, throughout the lockdown how do we imagine how do we reimagine the post covid world what kind of innovative solutions are going to come out of it because let's be honest ladies and gentlemen the world that we saw that the world that we experienced before uh, the coronavirus pandemic hit uh, has completely changed the way that we do work has completely changed the way we do education the way that we do any industry has completely changed and at the end of the day it comes down to the entrepreneurs it comes down to the innovators the dreamers the thinkers who actually make sure that the world that we live in is once again ready uh, to take itself forward and that is the reason why our chairman professor gautam rajodhri came up with the idea of the future proof hackathon and under his able leadership we were able to create uh, this platform where in not only are we going to be conducting a 50 hour hackathon in order to uh, find solutions to the post covid world but also create a lab which is not just a one off thing it's a lab that will be at techno india for uh, the foreseeable future where in every every year we'd be having this hackathon in order to come up with uh, bring out all, all the best of the talent from across the country and just like ravi mentioned before that we have uh, people from multiple states in india and we have almost 500 teams participating today uh, the top minds from these teams are going to have a chance uh, to prove their metal to come up with uh, to, with tech solutions on a on a regular basis and they will get all the kinds of support from techno india group including opportunities that doing a phd on the startup that they build uh, including uh, fooding lodging including uh, you know taking problem statements from some of the biggest companies in the world and innovating on the get go so the future proof labs uh, we will talk about it more as well but the future proof labs is here to stay and it is going to become uh, a cornerstone of innovation in uh, the eastern part of india Uh, it was it was the chairman's uh, vision that uh, the way that entrepreneurship works in the rest of the world does not necessarily work the same way in india uh, in, in especially in the east of india because here people are a lot more focused on getting a job be it the parents be it the students that uh, the stability of a job is important so the future proof lab uh, future proof labs is the first of its kind concept which brings together open innovation and entrepreneurship in this very interesting model where uh, not only will the students have the uh, ability to build their startups but they will not have to worry about um, going out and looking for funding going out and uh, 
uh, creating prototypes and uh, uh, their their daily sustenance because Techno India Group takes care of all of that in the back end. Uh, so we are very excited to see where this journey leads us. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for leading, uh, for for joining us from everywhere in the world. Uh, thank you very much to our uh, to our dear super patrons for joining us as well. I know all of you have very busy schedules, so we're going to move on with the rest of the program. Ravi, if you can please take it forward. Thank you, everyone, for joining and thank you for tuning in today. Super excited. Thank you so much, Meg. Thank you so much, Meg. Ruth, appreciate that. We 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 now have thousands of people on Facebook Live. I would like to welcome all of them once again. And uh, to take the discussion ahead, I would like to uh, bring in our, our chairman. Before I in invite him, I would like to quickly mention that uh, being a true visionary and an entrepreneur, um, our chairman, uh, um, you know, he's a first generation entrepreneur, started with a very, very small concept, which has now metamorphed into uh, one of the leading uh, education conglomerate in the country. Um, like a true innovator, uh, during the lockdown, when uh, things started, uh, you know, looking not very positive, that's when um, our chairman conceptualized this entire Future Proof Lab, which is a very, very interesting initiative. And Future Proof Hackathon is one part of the lab. Uh, we have with us Professor Dautam, Dr. Gautam Roy Chaudhary. He's the founder of Techno India Group, mentor, chairman, chancellor, Techno India University, and he's a first generation successful technopreneur. He started his career in 1985. Would you believe it? He started with five rupees as seed funding, uh, bootstrapping grant, as you call it. He ventured into computer training and software development, eventually leading towards uh, generation, generating fund and developing this mega consortium with several educational campuses offering education right from KG up till PhD. And now with Future Proof Lab, this is going to be a new way of education. TIG under him consists of 100 campuses, 21 engineering colleges, 12 business schools, 18 public schools, um, 11 independent high schools, four universities, 22 high-end research labs, three multi-speciality hospitals, two upcoming medical colleges, one Ayurveda college, R&D center, all of them catering to a 100,000 student base under the guidance of over 5,000 faculty and professionals across the country. Uh, Dr. Chaudhary, also, with his expertise and intellectual, has added various accolades to Techno India Group in various fields. He's spearheading a giant project in the field of medical advancement by setting up 300 medical college fan work. Fan, fan work. He has initiated a dream project of setting up several biotech parks in a stretch of 10,000 acres of land. Uh, it is my pleasure and honor to bring in Dr. Gautam Roy Chaudhary, Chairman of Techno India Group. Sir, request you to kindly uh, enlighten us with your thoughts. Very, very good morning to all the super patrons and all the super patrons are very, very well known to me and I got support from them also, uh, I think for the last 35 years. <coughs> Just last, since last 35 years, the Techno India Group developed now uh, the largest educational group throughout the world, not in India. And millions of people are benefiting through this project. This mega project this mega Techno India group, Techno India University. It is also through four hackathons in my life. It has developed through four hackathons. Only today I will share uh, briefly within five, six minutes that how these four hackathons inspired me to develop this huge Techno India initiatives. First hackathon, first hackathon was in the ACL office showroom. Then at, at Dorga Road at uh, yes, near Thaotala. One of my professor, uh, he encouraged me Without joining, I, I, 
I joined I I joined in Kelpa Pune, and he inspired me not to not to work as an employee. We try to be an employee, and uh, just I found the at, that is the junction of this personal computer and micro computers. I got the idea if we can purchase one computer, I can utilize the computer in the daytime for the student training and the evening time as a data processing. Because at that time there was huge data processing jobs available in the market. I just contact the bank to finance the computer. One computer cost was one lakh twenty thousand rupees, and I thought how I will generate the fund. This is also hackathon, one type of hackathon. How I will generate one one lakh twenty thousand within next fifteen days? Then I spending five rupees from my local. From my local uh, place, I printed 200 posters. That hopefully, the first computer training center and data processing center is going to start at my residence, one uh, room in, in our residence, hopefully residence. And uh, using the cycle of my friend, I pasted it personally in different uh, rail station, different eminent places. And I got the seed money of thirty thousand rupees for the seven days, and uh, eventually uh, I got one computer with two terminals from Asia. And I thought that if I I have I will have to have generate first I will have to generate fund. Without fund, nothing is possible. So many people will tell that I will help you. Uh, you uh, you go ahead through hackathon through this through that, but from my uh, from my experience, uh, just the entrepreneur should be very careful and this uh, through their innovative concept through their thinking they should uh, generate fund. After generating fund, I uh, after one year about about one thousand students about. Twenty computers, uh, just I have organized in different uh, in different computer training centers at different part of the state. Then I thought, then I thought, I will generate, I will develop. At that time, the previous government was not positive for establishing engineering colleges and try uh, the self financed or private uh, education. I thought that if I can uh, generate fund, I I can I will approach government, and I think gradually I will I will successfully. Well, just at that time, I used to I used to travel by local train from Hooghly to Calcutta. And one evening, at the time of returning, just I purchased the pap rice, and in the packet of pap rice, I, I found an advertisement of Sidac. Sidac was a very big company at that time. The very Sidac uh, that they are making a hackathon at Pune University campus, and the hackathon is based on the image processing. Now image processing is very very easy, but at that time it was very difficult. Because the computer, the computer now is gigabyte. There are no giga, giga is there. All are all are kilobytes. Kilo, kilobytes. Mm -hmm. It was a very difficult task. And uh, actually, I joined the hackathon. My 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 office objected that you, using five thousand rupees. I, even I I travel in silver class uh, train in ordinary coach. Even that uh, it was hectic. Uh, Tool and uh, the involvement of five thousand rupees, but my office told that unnecessary it will be wasted. I told, okay, let us let me uh, try my luck. Then I joined the hackathon, and hackathon 
uh, it was it was 48 hours hackathon and the hackathon this based on image processing how futuristic innovation innovation is possible after seeing the after seeing the uh, concept after seeing the uh, this uh, their plan immediately immediately one thing clicked in my uh, brain at that time our mr session he was a chief electoral officer uh, chief electoral officer of government of india and he was he was adamant to utilize this uh, voter id card throughout the india uh, our uh, let youtube who tried to tried to stop this but session was adamant then i thought that this as session is adamant so if we uh, if we uh, apply our this hackathon mind the hackathon what i have what i i will learn and what i i uh, uh, i will see here if we apply properly to if we apply properly in hackathon uh, just i think the one new arena maybe open i i uh, grab the idea of us processing and us processing is a unique example of this uh, preparation of voter id card because the, that time it was very difficult because the camera use the photographing through a huge camera the the uh, photo data data entry also in in digital language in bengali language there was no software etc for this bengali language at that time this again the uh, grabbing of video it was also a huge task and data processing data processing and data storing it was a very very difficult task at that time with kilobyte it is very very difficult uh just i met i got uh, i got the concept and it is a it is a con, uh, just innovative, innovative because we using image processing so many entrepreneurs were thinking so many so many so many projects but i thought this voter id card will give me uh, enough money for my next ventures then i met mr s k mahan he was a chief electoral officer of west bengal and as a young entrepreneur just he refused me to meet first day i am very i am very uh, grateful i am grateful mr mr uh, sen is here he he first day first day this is the difference between the several entrepreneurs first day he encouraged me this is the second second hackathon i will tell you but first hackathon mr reske morgan picked me out from the uh, writers building <laughs> he told me that to you know uh, our uh, mr jyoti basu will not allow this what is i got i kept my visiting card small visiting card uh, just in the uh, under the uh, glass of his table i i Uh, requested him said uh, one day i am keep i am telling one day you will call me you may you may you may need me he told no 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 it is not possible jyoti was is strict and he will it is not possible i i then uh, uh, okay uh, i waited three months after three months i got a call from mr morgan you come you come or uh, jyoti was to Uh, and other all other leaders uh, they have accepted this project and we have to do it very fast as through hackathon the the moda sapparendi the process everything i grabbed i told him you just he asked me 
how much you will take fees for this consultancy, for this support. There's a lot of support for making uh, spec, for tendering, so many formalities are there. I told him, sir, I am not, I am not a businessman, I am an entrepreneur. I will give you the full whole support for technology. And uh, but uh, in lieu, I want some job of some district. He told that you have no experience, you have nothing. Why? Uh, how you will do that, that job? How will you, it is not possible for you? I I requested him, sir, you manage you just uh, for a uh, young Bengali entrepreneur in, in Bengal. The entrepreneurship is no entrepreneurship is there at most. And so you please give me an opportunity. Then, then he gave the opportunity of this Kodas uh, ID card development at Hubli district uh, using uh, this concept, uh, this uh, data grabbing card, video grabbing card, data, data processing, image processing. We successfully done this within three months. Then, then Mr. Morgan uh, just. Uh, taken me to Jyoti Varsha and they announced that the young entrepreneur is 40, 40, 37 years back, uh, that they have done a good job and give a press conference and a huge, huge success and huge satisfaction. Then they recommend the other states of Tripura, the uh, Andhra Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh in, in Sikapu language, Telugu language, we have we have done this venture at Telugu language. At Biha, at uh, Tipura, this uh, transport system was not good. In some cases, I can remember, in some cases, we have used the elephants. And using the elephant, we visited uh, to different booths to take the photograph and to make the scene. This is a, this was my second hackathon. My my third hackathon. Then I generated twenty crore rupees at that time. My third hackathon, I met Jyoti Basu, and uh, Jyoti Basu uh, was uh, was dead against 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 the uh, private education system. Three, four days I convinced him and he asked me, what's your USP? He used to take three, four peg uh, good uh, whiskey in the evening and he was in a very good mood. I, uh, he asked me, what's your USP? I told that, sir, within 10 years, if you give me the opportunity, uh, I, have, I have generated fund. My next generation will spoil this fund. But if you give me, if you give me this uh, opportunity, to establish engineering colleges, either within 10 years, I will just reverse the direction of the trend. And it happened that people from people from Karnataka, Maharashtra, uh, in other states, they now they are they used to come uh, to West Bengal for higher education for engineering education. It was my second, uh, th it was my th third venture. My fourth bench, fourth hackathon, fourth hackathon. Just I met uh, our beloved Mr. Shen. He was the he was the uh, CEO of he was the uh, CEO of uh, Hitco. I told him, sir, uh, just I have generated fund. This fund will be fund will be wasted by next generation. So I want to establish an Indian college. So you give land at, uh, at your town. He told that how how a just budding entrepreneur, how can you can afford to generate, uh, to uh, purchase land at, so land is very costly. How you'll afford at the time? At the time, though it was very cheap, it is 60 lakhs rupees per acre. Even now it is now it is 30, 30 crore rupees per acre, same land. And actually, there, uh, he supported me, supported me, open support. He told me, I like, I am proud of him. 
he told me that i like the private uh, uh, the the private entrepreneurs and ideas of hackathon should be should be come forward and immediately you can't believe within one month completing all tenders everything all hurdles within the norms he allotted me land and gradually i started engineering college uh, b school schools throughout west bengal after this new government after this new government new uh, our village uh, uh, chief minister i thought that i i i will take her in confidence and uh, i met her uh, within 5 minutes within 5 minutes seeing our track seeing our track record within 5 minutes he has uh, granted our proposal for establishing a university techno india university uh, this is also a concept design how because after after 80 87 years of vishwavarati university uh, luckily we got the first university in west bengal and now the everything is history millions of millions of people are benefiting from this project and you see uh, in our payroll 5000 professors doctors engineers uh, are there and i can't forget the support of our our prime minister uh, our chief ministers our our uh, the officers of bengal otherwise the this journey of techno india group and techno india university was not possible at all so my my uh, my statement before today's hackathon participants is that you please be positive hackathon idea you may have idea today but you have to nurture your ideas you take the help of the we are always ready we, uh, now we are now 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 I, we can accumulate lot of lot of uh, this influential persons lot of support we will get you give the idea i ask megdud and polin and uh, mrc just to give a platform we will give a very good platform and i am confident within next 5 years my go next next objective within next 5 years at least at least one crore entrepreneur will develop in uh, west bengal and i want your support thank you very much Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chaudhary. That was wonderful. I uh, really appreciate your, you know, truly remark, um, wonderful remarks. Um, I would now like to take this opportunity to bring in. Um, um, before I bring bring in our next guest, I would like to take uh, permission from all the other speakers. We have Dr. Sarkar with us, and he has an emergency surgery scheduled. Uh, with permission from all the speakers, I would like to invite Dr. Sarkar. Uh, Let me let me quickly take this opportunity to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Sarkar. Um, Dr. Kunal Sarkar is a senior vice chairman and director and head of cardiac surgery at Medica Super Spe Specialty Hospital. Dr. Sarkar is the renowned cardiac surgeon of Kolkata. Well, can I can I just interrupt Sorry. and t say that is enough? Those two lines are enough. Yes. Sure. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a lot of angry screaming anesthetists, you know, whose whose language is deteriorating by the minute. I get delayed. <laughs> so i'm i'm sorry to have interrupted and i think you know uh, rupal has introduced me as a cardiac surgeon but in rather unparliamentary language we are known as over educated plumbers right <laughs> <laughs> if you meet any plumbers in the countryside they take about 6 months to train and uh, we are stupid people so we've been trained we've been training in this vascular plumbing for about you know uh, about 100 times more than what those clever people have so friends uh, professor ai choudhury megdoot all our friends respected 
uh, panelists and everybody present over here. Uh, you know, about 110 years from now, I was just thinking, the great author Charles Dickens, when he wrote Tale of Two Cities, he started off with the first line, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. So we find ourselves in such a predicament when within the uh, sort of, uh, th this sort of uh, 100 years from the last world ravaging pandemic, we are in the middle of another. Now, having said that, you know, I don't want this to become a kind of lecture on pandemic or a talk on it by any means. But what is very important is this, this pandemic, this little thing which is 100 microns across. And if you add all the viruses of the world together, the combined weight will be less than five grams. So this entity, which is 100 microns a piece with a total weight of less than five grams, has made the entire species of Homo sapiens look so helpless. But it has, it has changed and it has introduced certain positive disruptions as well. And one of the positive disruptions is, you see the way the world has come across and addressed this problem. It has involved doctors. It has involved people from public health. It has involved people from, uh, from sort of interdisciplines, but it has introduced a lot of technocratic conversation in the world today. About 50% of the work that is happening in the pandemic related era is to do with computerized mathematical modeling. You have people like Neil Ferguson, you have people like Niall Ferguson, you have people like Mark Levin, Who's, who have people like Sunetra Gupta based in Oxford. So all these people working in the world, some of them are more uh, computer people. They are more sort of mathematical people than they are physicians in that sense. So this whole business has also been a kind of exercise in knowledge assimilation and integrating, you know, the watertight barriers between what is biology, what is mathematics, what is software, what is, uh, what is computer sciences, the entire area seems to have been amalgamated into one. And we have to, time is running out, we have to address in an integrated way to this challenge that the world faces today. And if you look, you know, you've chosen a great day for this hackathon, because in this day, India, in a very topsy-turvy kind of way, we are trying to emerge from the lockdown, 8th of June. And I don't want to get into the lockdown has not entirely been, you know, had it been an examination, both at the central and the state level, I'm not entirely sure that either the central government or the state government would have obtained pass marks in this examination. You know, Professor Rai and Meghdoot may be very lenient examiners, but even in the, had the, in the hands of a lenient examiner, I think we have not fared very well in this exercise. But look at certain areas of India where clever people like you reside. One of the best models, one of the best states which has given the best results is Karnataka and Kerala. And both in Karnataka and Kerala, Bangalore being the software capital, Kerala having the highest amount of social development and education and primary health system. So again, an integration of knowledge and social consciousness has achieved results over there, which few of this sort of, you know, uh, leaders, so-called leaders who've been running around like headless chickens have not been able to achieve. So it is the knowledge which is the core component we cannot, we cannot fight this pandemic with slogans. We cannot fight this pandemic with nationalism. We have to fight this kind of a problem with intelligence. And before I leave you youngsters, ourselves, you know, we are so old that I've been just been given a membership card of the Jurassic Park, right? Not as an audience, but as a member, right? But having said that, <laughs> Even I've been trying, you know, I've been trying in my own way. I can probably share it with Meghdoot and Professor Rai Jodhuri sometime. Because you see, one problem is, because I do involve what little I understand, I don't involve, I don't understand too much. There is a huge limitation of data as applied to medicine. 
the aspect of data sciences in medicine has been completely uh, over occupied with the process of accumulating data, processing data, financial data, patients' data, etc. But the, in the domain, have we actually been of some use to the person? Have we made an experience of real life health care an easy? Something in hand today that gives us a disease. Do we have anything in hand today? You go to a hospital, in a government hospital, you will see five, 10,000 patients who are queued up waiting to see an OPD, people running around not knowing where to go to. In a country where the last train ticket can be bought on the computer side, in a country where you know when you have about 90% of 1.3 billion people on a database, why can we not direct a patient and give appointments right on your mobile devices, right on your computer? So the problem is that those of you, as you describe the verticals, as you describe the areas that you will be working, your why was Swiggy a success? Swiggy was not a success because it integrated 5,000 restaurants. It was a success because it made possible the integration of software to deliver services. And in medicine so far, I think uh, most of our doctors are actually, you know, we are either mad or stupid. Because if we were either not mad or stupid, we would not have been doctors in the first place. So probably we don't understand much of this, but you youngsters who are a part of this wonderful hackathon, start thinking that we cannot be inert, dissociated, divorced data crunchers anymore. We have to start thinking how to link this process to make a material difference in healthcare delivery. And in that process, if I can be of any use to you, let me know, right? And being an incorrigible, incorrigible Bengali, uh, what a Bengali says, you know, when, whenever a Bengali speaks for about five minutes, look, it has to be either regarding his wife or about Rabindranath or with Vivekananda. If either your wife, Rabindranath or Vivekananda is not, is, is not mentioned, then it means that the, that the person is not a Bengali, he's pretending to be one. So I will end when Rabindranath had said that Jayache Matir Kachakachi, so you people, you have a challenge in front of you. You have wonderful people supporting you. You have all the support of funding and infrastructure. You have inspiring people like Professor Rai Chaudhuri, wonderful infrastructure like Techno India. You've got the young energy of Meghdoot Rai Chaudhuri. So utilize all of it and let us make the, 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 the world of data sciences the world of software technology of some lasting practical benefit in the domain of health sciences and benefit. And till such time, I am inflicted with Alzheimer's disease. If I can contribute a little bit to your process, it will be a great privilege. And I, you can't see it. I actually have screaming anesthetist running up and down the corridor. I have one of three operations to get to right now. So I wish you all the well, and I'm humbled by the fact that you asked me to be with you today. God bless you all. My respects. Be well. Be safe. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ravi, could you please take on? Thank you Mike. so much, Dr. Sarkar. I, I, I thought if, uh, if uh, Professor Chaudhary would like to uh, say a few words of thanks, or we can continue. We'll, let's continue. We'll do the thanks at the later. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Megdu. Thank, thank you, sir. Take care. care. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sakana. I think. Sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarkar. I think uh, it was it was wonderful listening from Dr. Sarkar, being one of the you know most uh, well known and well sought after um, cardiac surgeon in the country. Uh, with so much, uh, you know, humble attitude, I think he was able to connect with all the students and all the participants who have joining us from across the country would uh, would have, you know, really uh, been inspired by his talk. 
Um, I would now like to take this opportunity to invite uh, Mrs. Manashu Roy Chaudhary, co-chairman Techno India Group, the first lady of the Techno India Group and the inspirational factor behind the immensely successful founder of the group, Sri Gautam Roy Chaudhary. She's a role model for those women who never got the opportunity to identify their talent, their latent potential and channelize it and trade the path of success. Mrs. Chaudhary with her grit and determination walked in step with Sri Gautam Roy Chaudhary to serve the responsibilities of schools, colleges and universities under her belt, Pan India to a great, and took her to greater heights. Recipient of several awards such as the best private university of the year 2018 in entrepreneurship development, innovation of higher education for Techno India University for, by Quality Forum of India and Sri Panyur Award from Eastern Chamber of Commerce, Mrs. Mrs. Manishi Roy Chaudhary is a true example of women empowerment, women entrepreneurship and bringing innovation. I, I take this opportunity to invite Mrs. Chaudhary to take the discussion ahead. A very good morning to all present for this wonderful program during the lockdown period. It said winners don't do different things. They do things differently. And I should take this opportunity to say that I feel I have been with such a winner who thinks differently to create Thing, things which made it a name, a success to the state, to the nation, Techno India Group. Yes, being the better half of Mr. Gautam Roy Chaudhary, I really feel that when everyone was in their homes, thinking about the virus, thinking about their health, what are the problems that they are facing? He was a person who was thinking about what can be done so that the nation can have a chance, an opportunity where students can study, students can be with better jobs and innovation and creation comes. Yes, and being a proud mom, I should say, that to take his wishes, his dreams forward, we had Meghdut Roy Chaudhary and Pauline as well. So as we are dealing with Techno India Group, the office as a family, the small family from here is also doing its bit. Thank you so, so much, everyone who has joined for this program. It is said, it is said that it's not the strongest species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the most responsive to change. So we are all looking forward to each and everyone who are in their best of their health and spirits. I'm really honored to be a part of this platform and graciously welcome you all to this forum of Future Proof Hackathon 2020. The rise of information and communication technologies that is computers, software, telecommunications and the internet and the large impact that these new technologies are having on the way that society functions have prompted many to claim that we have entered a new era, often referred to as the era of technology. A click of the mouse can open an entire new world. The word hackathon freezes our mind with the prompt idea of the word hack and marathon, which implies that team of programmers are in the marathon to develop prototypes and that innovate on a theme. I feel that the concept of hackathon in today's world is really motivating for the young entrepreneurs. Creating new concepts and ideas 
motivating the young generations for networking, adding value to the CV, the company branding plays an important role in recognition in the industry, talent acquisition and product development. I vouch that to keep up with the pace of the technology era, one must not always concentrate on the paycheck, rather they should follow their passion to create a difference in people's life. To conclude it, let us all learn how to harness technology to evolve new ideas into reality. I remember when Mr. Roy Chaudhuri was speaking about his old days, he was the person when he went to telco, but did not continue his job came back to his hometown and wanted to set up the business, which he finally brought down to the privatization of engineering colleges, bringing the students from all over India back to West Bengal, the first private university in the, in the state, and me being the partner being the person to witness all this. It was, it was really a pleasure to have Dr. Kunal Sharkar moving, speaking for us and moving away because of his surgery. It actually gives a huge meaning. In these days, when we are concerned about our health education, it is because of these doctors who are working day and night on spot, not considering their health, their safety, that we are safe today at home. So hats off to the medical fraternity who is there with us, behind us, so, so proud to have Dr. Kunal Sharkar with us today as the speaker, a motivating a person full of life and always for his patients. It's wonderful hearing from you. Now let us introduce the other speakers with us. So let us welcome on this platform all the eminent personalities from the various sectors of the society to share their valuable thoughts and concepts. Let us begin with our very own and experienced administrator with a demonstrated history of working in senior government positions. Mr. Devashi Sen, CMD Hitko, and additional chief secretary, government of West Bengal, IT department strong professional expertise in city development, urban analysis and democracy are his power tools to make a huge emphasis in our society. Adding to it, a smiling personality, very well known for his hospitality, even not letting me leave the campus when I was for a program that I ha should have my cup of tea before coming back to the campus. So thank you so much, Dr. Sen. It is, it is all these small moments which really matter as a person. Wonderful to have you with us for today's program. Uh, a good, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Mrs. Roy Chaudhary, for such a wonderful introduction. And it was, uh, it was a journey down memory lane uh, with Dr. Gautam Rajchaudhary, uh, you know, how he came up with his five hackathons and our interaction. It is indeed fascinating looking back upon life and seeing what difference uh, you all have made in the history of Bengal. And definitely on behalf of the government also, I would like to put an acknowledgement to uh, everything that has been done. 
but uh, we are slightly running late and therefore i'll dive straight into the topic we have it's wonderful concept to have a future hackathon a uh, concept and i'll just put five or four or five very small points for the youngsters to think about what is it that we need in the new normal of the future number 1 as we were uh, fighting you know the 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 covid 19 lockdown seniors citizens not getting their food making containment zones of bleaching sanitization uh, ma- ensuring that the medicines are uh, reaching the uh, people who need it every nobody should come out and every while this is happening we saw a very very remarkable thing all of us have seen that you know lots of vendors are coming to our homes and selling vegetables and this concept of home delivery and the shift in the career many of these were auto drivers they were auto drivers so when we think of a uh, change in the career change in the direction change in the new normal we should we should i think learn from these people the uh, not so affluent people changing their entire career style in half a day because they have to uh, because they have to feed their families at the end of the day so number one is in the new normal you have to change you have to change your career you have to change the way things are and that brings me to the first point in the hackathon problem is that home delivery is a thing that is going to stay is there a better way of doing it everything is going to be home delivered people are not going to clubs and entertainment zones and let's think of new ways for example delivery by drones have you heard of blov beyond line of vision uh, rules that are coming up by the 30th of july drones as the indian rules are that you have to see it uh, to, uh, to uh, till you fly now that doesn't give you a lot of opportunities if you have to constantly see it within your line of sight in an urban setup it doesn't work but this new rule is coming in it's not there so this is the time to act suppose it comes in and then you can deliver medicines you can deliver substances and everything so problem number 1 what is the new way of delivering services including drone with this new rule coming into place and while on the subject of drone i will say that uh, if you have marked that on the 24th of april which is very much within the lock up zone uh, there was this announcement if you have caught it that the entire rural india every part of the indian uh, rural scenario that is more than 70% of india's place will be surveyed by the drone to find out the land holding of the houses of every village in the country can you imagine the amount of opportunity is going to throw if dr gautam raj chaudhary was in the same spot today he would have invested those 20 rupees to see how best to do a survey of a remote village through a drone uh, to to get the settlements because it is a declared statement of the government of india coming none other from the prime minister of india on the day of the panchayati raj so the first thing that i would like the future hackathon enthusiast to look at is new ways of home delivery drones included two just like toto drivers were migrating overnight into egg suppliers likewise another funny thing is happening no ambulance driver is willing to take a covid affected person we have our uh, in nkd we have our ambulance also but the driver just said if it's covid i don't go i have my family and everywhere even if i go i won't be allowed to enter my house my villages won't allow me and that is the time that is the time i realized there is an going to be an increase whether the covid comes or goes or other things happen autonomous ambulances india as a country doesn't need autonomous vehicles like in the us and other places but think about these infectious diseases think about autonomous ambulances think about solid waste management think about preliminary interrogation i think there is a huge scope awaiting us and this is again another area in small pits and bases autonomous vehicle is a huge subject but only ambulance because the destination point is very much there probably we have a better way of doing this the third point is just as we are doing on this over zoom the entire 
scenario. Everybody of us are now very much familiar with uh, you know video conferences. We are so familiar that we don't even give instructions. Kya karna hai? So just send the password and the joining media meeting number. And starting from Google Meet to Microsoft Meet to WebEx to I n number of things are there. So this is going to increase. Just because Bata is there, Khadim Footwear doesn't sell. It's not a game. So just because Zoom is there, is there a better way of doing this? You know what we feel in the companies and in the corporate world. We miss people in the room. So 3D holography, 3D holography coupled with video analytics. For remote meetings, remote interactions, remote birthdays, this is the thing to come in the new normal. Do you have a good way of doing this? My question to all participants of the future hackathon, even if it is in a small way, even if it is an incremental thing, and I have seen how 3D effect can be done in a in a simple plain laptop if you have the intelligence and the understanding of how 3D imaging works. So we want to have people in our rooms, not exactly shaking our hands, but just in front of us on the other side of the dinner table. Can you do that? The third point, uh, the fourth point that I would like to pose to the future hackathons is when the pandemic was just there, there was a huge, huge demand for masks, face masks, and supply was not there. And what we did, we bought some again in Gautam Rai Chaudhary model. We, we, we went to Bada Bazaar, got 300 meters of green cloth, called the self help groups from the nearby villages, gave them one or two samples, and in two days flat, 48 hours flat, we were rolling out masks, which we started distributing first to the conservancy workers, then to the uh, ambulances and nurses, and then to the other people. And this is how we had done. My point is this. Increasingly, the economy is going to be hyper-local. People are not going to move. International travel has stopped. Movement of lorries across states is uh, difficult. So what is going to have is going to the manufacturing sector. It's going to be hyper-local. And this throws up new ways of manufacturing. And this also throws up new ways of automating. Because in this world, Again, since all the labor has come in, as we all know from our economics lessons, capital, means of production, money and labor is this. Now labor and industry are different. They are uh, the 7.5 lakh laborers are, have come back to Bengal and the cotton mills of Ahmedabad are lying empty. So what do you do? Robotics. Robotics is going to come all over the world. Emigration is not going to return. Do you think robotics, you can make industrial robotics I'm talking about? If that is a field that you can concentrate upon, I think that is a very good way of, uh, of solving a problem and, then, and that's going to be very, very popular in the new normal. My last thing, while I have said the means of production will be hyper-local, intellectual property rights shall be global, ultra-global. So my submission, and also to Madam Manushi Rai Choudhury, is that if nobody, starting from Donald Trump to anybody, is allowing anybody to come in, H-1B visas are not being given, international travel is not possible. Nobody is trusting anybody, quarantines in all countries. So international travel is not possible. So therefore, the professors have more time. I'm talking about international universities like Harvard, Princeton, Princeton, Berkeley, and others. And we can have their avatars. And already the online education is going on in the higher education, in the research field. Now there'll be more easily uh, possible to have the Harvard professor come in and give a full uh, seven month se session, one week each or something, whatever can be done. So intellectual property is going to be hyper-globalized. Can we do something about it? Manufacturing is going to be hyper-local. Can we do something about it? Delivery to whom is going to be the norm? Is there a better way of doing this? And digital interactions are going to be the norm. Can we do better from this? And one hackathon idea that we are already calling from Newtown is contactless cash. You have seen how people, when they take cash, some of them even 
you know, use their uh, lips to count the cash and we think we should get rid of it. So if there is one way of going to digital cash, that also in the fintech sector, that is also a possibility. So some straight thoughts out of my handling of the pandemic in these days, even today is the, uh, is the first day of the normalcy of lockdown phase two. We all have to gear our offices up. But uh, I think it's a grand idea of Meghdoot, Pauline, Dr. Amanushi Raichadri, Dr. Gautam Raichadri to bring all of us together and see how best we can tackle the new world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sen. It was so, so enlightening to give such ideas for the hackathon. And we'll definitely see to the points so that our students can take care and the teachers are really guided by your valuable thoughts. Thank you so much. Next, we have a renowned name we are all related to in the educational fraternity, who is none other than Dr. Shoikot Moitro, Vice Chancellor of Macaut. The master behind the ceramic technology has created a niche in the educational sector. Mm -hmm. Under his guidance, the research and education have taken giant step ahead, encouraging the students to learn and perform. Quality education has been upgraded by him to enrich lives of students. Welcome, Dr. Moitro. It's really wonderful to have you for all the participants, and we would definitely like to hear from you. Uh, besides your designation, you are also a very uh, smiling, hospitable host in your office. And whenever we are there for programs or visits, I really feel that everyone in the team is touched by your thoughts. Thank you so much. We would like to hear something from you. OK, thank you. Good morning to uh, all of you, my co-panelists. Uh, Mr. Gautam Rai Choudhury, Madam Manushi Rai Choudhury, Meghdut Rai Choudhury. I'm really happy that uh, you have organized this uh, hackathon through one of your uh, subsidiary, probably, this future group. Uh, now, the thing uh, which I would like to uh, share, because most, most of things has already been uh, shared by my previous uh, panelists, I would like to add a few words. You see, because we, we are observing being in this academic scenario, a paradigm shift in the entire practices in the last few years. Because uh, the industry has already migrated to Industry 4.0 concept. And our education systems, that was also undergoing a change. And from Education uh, 2.0, it was uh, migrating to Education 3.0, and it, uh, by maybe within a few years, the education would have been shifted to Education 4.0. Now, the basic features of all this thing is, why I am mentioning it, because this is quite relevant. In the context of today's organizing these hackathons and all other activities, which we are undertaking now, and this it, industry 4.0, we all know, already it has been mentioned. It will be dominated by features like automation, analytics, remote work process. And education 4.0, education 3.0, or 3.5, or 4.0, whatever it is, it uh, was also, um, you know, this, imbibed um, with all these sorts of features. Actually, here, what are the problem is, we uh, were not being able to uh, keep ourselves uh, changed with this changing scenario. Maybe this pandemic situation has accelerated the process, but the writing on the wall is we, we uh, was required to change our entire practices. One of the practice 
which uh, we need to change completely that is the mode of our learning system or pedagogy particularly because the focus uh, which is required now is based on it, it it is on experiential learning and learning by doing or by there are many other you know this uh, uh, phrases which uh, people are using time and again that is continuous learning learning lifelong learning collaborative learning all these things and these are becoming very much important in today's context because if we look at this economic scenario our economic scenario already if we look at our gdp it has uh, reached to at the extreme bottom level perhaps in the last few decades is an unprecedented unprecedented you know this downfall of gdp and uh, it is being said that if situation goes in right direction if economy again uh, gets a boost then it will again take a uprising turn making this is a particular v shaped curve but some people are saying that uh, this situation this pandemic situation may continue for some more period and in that case there will be certain uncertainty and irregularity in the uprising turn of this economy but eventually it will go up maybe after a few uh, you know this uh, shakes up and downs it may again go up but the worst case may happen if this situation continues for a pretty long time then the chance of recovery of this economy is uh, very much remote and people are talking about the situation which is similar to great depression of 1929 and there now we need to be very very careful about pulling our all strength together to tackle this types of uncertain situation and our most important resource is now our demographic dividend that is our youngsters our our young students and based on their intelligence based on their innovativeness we can aspire again to march ahead if this types of worst situation ever comes to india now you see already uh, in this particular hackathon many areas have been chosen here i like to say uh, this uh, this design print type event and all these things this uh, this would have been a regular practice for all these academic programs across the entire country to culture this Uh, innovativeness culture the entrepreneurial attitudes and um, culture for collaborative learning or collaborative uh, collaboration in doing some things so this this was very much required for apt if we look at the entire country we have many distinct advantages but till now we were not being able to reap out the benefits we were having you know this uh, the best biodiversity probably the best biodiversity in the entire world natural resources are abundant including water resources forest resources mineral resources human resources but till now we are not being able uh, to uh, take benefit of these natural blessings and the entire country is surrounded by ocean from three sides one side is himalaya in the in the entire world you will not find this geographical advantage and all these types of variety and diversity as advantage which are naturally existing at this country but why we could not take advantage of all this scenario because of our mindset of our following the same practices orthodox practices time and again and that's why we never encouraged this innovative minds or aspiring minds to take up the challenge to go for this entrepreneurial activities to propose solution formidable solution we that was never encouraged now this has the time has come this time particularly because of this compulsion of home confinement and restriction of travel may give rise to home based knowledge based entrepreneurship after world war 2 that happened in japan electronic industry became you know this a home culture of different at different homes so that 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 chance or that opportunity is now waiting for us we need to now 
provide the right type of ambience, supports, encouragement to these young, young students. And I'm very, uh, very much happy that uh, uh, this Techno India group, uh, Gautam Rai Choudhury, Meghdud Rai Choudhury, they are doing all these things. And because you see, after all this, uh, you know, nurturing this act, this cult, these activities or cultures, we are uh, aspiring or we can hope for developing a large numbers of job givers. Employment is a huge problem now. People are not in a position to retain their jobs, and many people who are who have their uh, uh, livelihood based on you know this entire market and all these things because of the disruptive situation, either they have lost jobs, they are migrating to their home places, and we are regularly. Uh, encountering all these news is this uh, um, unfortunate news is time and again. Now, who will take care of all these situations? How to take care of all these situations? We need to take take care of all these situations collectively. This society is uh, is going to be transformed to a knowledge based egalitarian society, and there only you know this possessing of knowledge, only you know this uh, possession of some degrees, some theoretical conception, some mechanical you kind know, of this knowledge. That will not help. How to translate it into real life, you know, the solution for any problems. Abundant problems are existing in social sectors, in um, environmental sectors. You name our this, a few of my few previous speakers already mentioned. We have opportunities in smart cities. We have opportunities restoring environment. We have opportunities smart agriculture, precision agriculture. So they are how we can channelize this talent or this enormous potential or energy which is existing among these youngsters in a meaningful way. There lies, you know, this, uh, our real test. And that's, that's why uh, this, these types of, I know, these practices, it needs to be followed time and again. And after that, what is the outcome of it? It is not like that merely organizing one event and all these things are sufficient enough. We need to make it sustainable. And there should be at least some outcome based on you know, this continuous support. And until and unless it, uh, some part of this, if not giving result, practical results, we should not stop. And my request to um, particularly this, um, those who are uh, looking after these events and mentoring these events, you kindly see that uh, after all these things, a mechanism is developed by which this students who have visible ideas, viable ideas, that they can be encouraged to make it really happen. And that is, that is, uh, that is required for the, the dire necessity for the entire country now. And that is the best thing which we can hope for our next, uh, next generation for, for our future. If we survive, then uh, we want to see emergence of a new India. And that is possible by 2024-25, before the pandemic scenario, it was being told the entire it, this industrial sector is going to be changed by 2024-25. And academic scenario, particular tertiary education, particular professional education, it uh, was required to be changed. The situation has been accelerated. Let us take the benefit of it while the students are confined at their home, in encouraging them and inviting them to gather their knowledges, to gather their strengths, to gather their you know, ideas, gather their innovativeness in a meaningful way. And I'm always uh, an optimistic person. I, I think that um, it will happen after uh, with our uh, effort, with our support, encouragement, and with our, uh, you know, this all sorts of, you know, this um, uh, support to uh, these youngsters. So with this, I would like to conclude. Again, I would like to give a big thanks to Techno India Group and its uh, future group for organizing this hackathon. And I wish that something tangible and meaningful will come out of it. Thank you. Thank you so much to take that line to continue. If we survive. Uh, <laughs> একটা কথা আছে যে যখন গোটা বিশ্ব চিন্তা করছে আমরা বাঁচবো কিনা ভারতীয়রা আচার বানাচ্ছে যাতে তারা পরের বছর খেতে পারে আই ফিল ইন্ডিয়ান্স উই আর সো পজিটিভ মাইন্ডেড উই অলওয়েজ 
think the best about it. So we are going to survive and we are going to make it to, uh, to go for a better India. And Dr. Mitra, thanks once again because Makkaut has already faced all the positive changes after you have taken over. And this was the online education, the innovative and creative ideas had started pouring in after your joining. So I think your ideas today will be definitely taken care of so that our students are being guided by your thoughts. Thank you so much. Now, uh, Now we have an entrepreneur, professionally qualified as a lawyer with a vast work experience in diverse business domains, engineering systems, information technology solutions, and gradually catering in the energy sectors. It's none other than Mr. Deep Mukherjee. A chairperson, Energy and Environment Committee, president designate of the Bengal Chamber of Commerce, an industry and managing director. Currently is an investor and country director for Big Solar Limited UK, and also chairs the position of managing director, Synergist Energy Limited UK and India operations. Is also incubating an IT startup, Technolegion Limited, in Kolkata, India. Thank you so much for being with us and we welcome you from Techno India Group as well as Bengal Chamber of Commerce. We would like to hear something which will help the students to be motivated and learn from. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Roy Choudhury, for your very kind introduction. And I do very much echo your sentiments we will, we shall not only survive, but I'm sure we shall even thrive going forward. We should be positive, we should think positive, we should feel positive, and our actions would necessarily be positive. Compliments to uh, the Techno India Group and the Fut Future Proof Hackathon 2020 under your regis. Uh, I think is indeed a very commendable initiative and contextually very well timed because potentially this hackathon could make a very positive contribution in being part of an overall regeneration process within the wider recovery plan post COVID-19 pandemic. The regeneration process that I see coming up would indeed be of a transformational scale in its scope. And it shall impact business, it shall impact the economy, it shall impact society at large. But how would that transformation be? The transformation that I see happening now would be purpose-driven. Purpose-driven business for a purpose-driven economy. And this, I think, would define what we are all now talking about new normal. If we would call it a new normal, the new normal would be a purpose-driven, from a business perspective, a purpose-driven business for a purpose economy. What does this business of tomorrow look like? What would it look like? It would, of course, be a resilient business, but it would also be a business that is that embraces ethics first. I hasten to add, these are my personal observations. Just a message for all the incubates and the participants who are coming into the hackathon. A business that is resilient, no doubt, in its objective, in its operations, in its thought process, of course, 
but importantly is ethical in its practices right across the value chain. A business that is empathetic in managing its people, its stakeholders, the community at large, and a business that is ever so conscious of its ecological footprint. So to my mind, a business that would pass a three-way test of ethics, empathy, and ecology. We have talked about, Mr. Sen has talked about new ideas. The hackathon has listed 10 large verticals, business verticals, where the in innovation can happen. But these innovations, dear friends, need to dovetail with what I call a purpose-driven business and a purpose-driven business that passes the three-way test. I have a very simple, straightforward message to all the incubates, and that is you are at a crossroad. We all are at a crossroad, and we need to make very clear and unequivocal choice. It's a time of reckoning. It's, it's a time to make a choice. Your innovation, when translated into reality, would that be a catalyst for a societal transformation? This is imperative. Whether it will be a catalyst for a societal information, uh, transformation that is equitable, that is inclusive, that is sustainable. Let us not make a mistake of channelizing our energy and the innovation that gets translated into reality, into a business operation, into unsustainable way of doing things, of doing the business, unethical in its practices, isolationist in its approach, and exclusive in its nature. Because remember, we are all looking for a co shared common world. So let's do business for good. Let the tech ideas that are coming up be dovetailed for a purpose-driven business that's good for all. Thank you very much, Techno India, for this opportunity. Unfortunately, I have to rush out because I, I need to get on a call uh, with the US, a webinar. So again, Thank you very much for giving this opportunity and every good wish for this initiative. And I'm sure you will make not only a difference, as Kunal put it, but a big difference. Thank you very much indeed. It was wonderful to hear from you, Dr. Mukherjee. And we would definitely look forward so that we can have ethics, values, ecology, sustainability, all included when the businesses are taking forward. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Mr. Raichodhi. Thank you, Dr. Raichodhi. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Meghdoot. And thank you, everyone else. Thank you, thank you very you. much, Mr. Mukherjee. See you soon. Bye Good bye. luck for your webinar. Thank you. Bye. Bye. A great brand is a story that never stops unfolding. So here we have with us the expertise in structuring the brand communication strategy, Mr. Shumit Roy. A founder director of Unib Brands achieved great success stories of various brands across the globe. He's famous for showing people how to write the brand communication motorcycle since 1987. A pioneer in the field of brand building, worked closely with clients from Coca-Cola to Castrol, Hindustan to Hema's Marketing, Sri Lanka, from Marico to Mastic, to name a few. His teams with O&M and Lintas have mastered his potentiality to a greater height. So we are eagerly waiting to hear from you, over to you. Thank you, Mrs. Raichasri. Uh, I'm going to try and make my talk even shorter than the introduction, because I have a very simple hack 
to offer all those who want to make their businesses future-proof. And that hack is this. Don't base your business on a rationale. Base your business on an emotional. Because emotional needs never go away. Rational needs change with technology. I'll give you an example. Kodak forgot they were in the memories business and they forgot to put a SIM card into their camera. Now, Samsung didn't think they were in the cell phone business, so they happily put a camera into their cell phone. Further, if Kodak had remembered they were in the memories business, they would have created an online service called Kodak Moments and Instagram ne never needed to happen. Kodak closed down because they were busy patenting film and camera and products and services. Base your business on an emotional need and your future proof. I can see surprised faces from even the pandas. I'm used to ha handling questions from, from uh, the others. If I'm clear with what I've said, fine. If the other panelists don't agree with me that you can ensure a hack, you can make your, it, it's a little like what Mr. Dave Mugaj said. If you have a purpose which meets an emotional need, you're future proof. Thank you. I'm done. It's shorter than the introduction. <laughs> yes. Shorter. Thank you. Shorter because... and very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. It's, it's said that using artificial intelligence very recently during these lockdown periods, Shotoji uh, Troy's Pothe Pachari, though it was a black and white version, has been changed to a colored version to think that probably these were the color shades used in that film. So this is a film which takes us back to mentality, to emotions, which is related to Bengal, but to try where the colors really go on it. I feel I just felt that after hearing you, this is very much related to your speech. Definitely, we ask our students to have emotions and let the businesses be purpose driven, full of empathy and emotions. And if they Thank need you. any help, they're welcome to just write to me at mobike at gmail.com. I'd be happy to sh uh, show them whichever business that they want to be in, the business that they're really in, and that business will always be an emotion. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Let's move on. Yes. Uh, Ravi, maybe you can take it over. Thank you very much, Mr. Roy. See you soon. Thank Thanks you to so all much. our super patrons uh, for, uh, for coming on. Of course, we'll have a formal vote of thanks later. But uh, Ravi, can you take on with the rest of the program? Thank you so much, Megdu. Thank you so much, Mr. Roy. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Roy Chaudhary, for that wonderful uh, introduction to all the panelists and for your speech as well. I would now like to take this opportunity to bring in our next guest. Uh, we have with us Ms. Pauline Larwar. She's Director of Sustainability at Techno India Group. Pauline uh, is the Chief Curator of Future Proof Hackathon. She was born in Paris, where she also spent the first 25 years of her life. She has developed her expertise in strategy consulting and social entrepreneurship especially as the co-founder of non-profit Aqua, which supports social enterprise and NGOs through social impact assessment studies. Um, interestingly, Pauline has spent a lot of time working uh, in, with NGOs and not-for-profits in Africa, Asia, South America. In 2018, Pauline moved to Kolkata, India, where she joined Techno India Group, one of the largest educational conglomerate in India. She is now sustainability director of the group, where she's striving to bridge the mis miscommunication and missed opportunities amidst the players of sustainability and social sectors through her network-based venture, Y East. Pauline brings a very unique approach of combining business with sustainability. I think it's, it would be wonderful to hear from you, Pauline, requesting you to kindly take it ahead. Thank you, Ravi. I just wanted to announce to everyone that we are five to seven minutes away from closing this uh, longer than expected wonderful uh, session, inaugural session. So uh, bear with us. I am going to be a little more boring than all of our um, other motivational speakers because I'm going to be the one reminding you of the main guidelines of the hackathon. But before that, I wanted to first thank 
all of our speakers before um, for their motivational and inspired inspirational words. Um, even for me and for all of us, I think it has been a learning journey. And I would maybe take out one of the takeaways, um, which I especially got from um, Mr. Mukherjee, who said uh, that it could potentially be um, a game changer, this hackathon. I am calling all of the participants to not take it as a basic student um, or, or small project, but it could really have the potential to change, to bring about positive change. It could really have the potential to take you uh, to a, a whole other level in terms of professional skills, in terms of businesses, in terms of where you are in your, in your path, professionally and, person, and personally. So it's, a, it's an earnest request uh, for all of the participants to really take this exercise uh, quite seriously and really understand the potential that it has to bring about positive change. Really, really, that I, I really mean that. Um, I would also like to now thank all of the faculty mentors, all of the vertical leads, all of the lead coordinators, uh, all of the technical mentors that have been behind the organization of this hackathon. Um, to staff of Techno India Group, we could not be prouder and more happy to work with, with all of you. And we're sure that this event will be a huge success, especially for your patience and your support in getting ready throughout the process for this hackathon and, uh, and mentoring our participants throughout, throughout the hackathon, which will be launched in just a few minutes. So thank you so much, uh, everyone. And thank you to all the participants for coming in and, and really bring in your, your efforts for the, for, the, for the days that are going to be coming this week. Um, so just to recap the overall schedule, just in a few minutes, we will be launching the hackathon. Then we will have, uh, <laughs> oops, <laughs> Is it okay? Yeah. Then we will have uh, three different checkpoints during the hackathon. Checkpoints are moments where participants will meet with their faculty mentors so that faculty mentors can make sure that they all progress throughout the hackathon and follow the pace of it and answer any queries or, or challenges that they face along the way. So the first checkpoint is going to be this evening at 6 p.m. The, the second checkpoint will be tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. And the third final checkpoint will be tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Right, right from this checkpoint, the third checkpoint, um, participating teams will have, have to um, have started working on their final deliverable. The final uh, submission deadline is on Wednesday, 1 p.m. You all know as of now that you will need to, to fill in this final submission form by Wednesday, 1 p.m. It's all in the document that is called Particip Participation Master Guide. All of the information is here and has been sent to each and every participant. So final deadline, Wednesday, 1 p.m. And then we will meet again in a similar fashion on Thursday, 11th of June from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. for us to announce the results, the final results, the winners, of, um, of this hackathon. As Megbut was mentioning at the beginning of the session, um, and one of the main um, originalities of this hackathon, especially thought by our chairman, is that the rewards behind, um, behind the hackathon are absolutely original and are really thought in such a way that we can take forward the ideas that we have been shortlisted. Uh, there are a few cash prizes, but most importantly, there is some incubation support, employment opportunities, internship opportunities, and higher education opportunities behind this hackathon for uh, some individual winners that are going to be part of the first selected teams. Really, really encouraging you to give your best in these few days to come. Just one last point uh, for everyone to make or to make it clear for everyone, your final de deliverable is a, a short video, not more than, than two minutes. I insist not more than two minutes that you need to submit, not after 1 p.m. on Wednesday, otherwise you may risk to be disqualified. 
and it needs to present your hard work that you have put in for uh, in the <clears throat> within the, the, the previous two days. It's a two minute video where you need to present your MVP, which is the minimal prototype, viable prototype, where basically you can show your code, you can show the app and uh, a mock-up of the app that you uh, worked on. You can talk to, uh, directly talk to the video to explain your point, to explain your problem statement, to explain your idea, and to explain how to make it, to, to take it forward. All of the elements that you need to include in this final deliverable are in this document called Participati Participation Master Guide, uh, which you all have. So that is all for me. I really encourage you to um, follow your emotions, to, uh, to follow the causes that are dear to your heart uh, when you are inventing and in innovating during this hackathon. And we are very, very, very happy to, as Ravi said at the, be Ravi said at the beginning, to be sharing a historical moment with you, not only for Techno India Group, but also for Eastern India as a whole. So thank you so much, everyone, for being part of the event. Thank you so much, Colleen. Really appreciate your, uh, your thoughts around it. Um, uh, so wonderful. Now the main moment all of you have been waiting for. I would spend a couple of minutes talking about the hackathon, the idea behind building this up, uh, the, you know, the timelines and the entire event flow, and then I would uh, go ahead. Um, so the Future Proof Hackathon 2020 is a large scale virtual event organized by Techno India Group. As I, as I mentioned, um, this is happening for the first time in this part of the country. In fact, these are, this is one of the very few hackathons of such scale uh, in the world. It will start Monday. Uh, I mean, it's already starting around 11.50, I would say, we would be able to start the hackathon. It will go until 1 p.m. on Wednesday, 10th June. Uh, the hackathon tries to bring light on innovative tech solutions that will thrive in a post-COVID-19 world. For example, ideas that solve a specific challenge that society has faced or might face during and post-COVID-19 crisis. Um, in the other world, uh, other words, the Future Proof Hackathon is a tech contest between hundreds of participating teams who are striving to develop an innovative viable solution within 50 hours that shall eventually be implemented and deployed post hackathon uh, participating teams has to meet three checkpoints during the hackathon which i will talk about but, we, but before i do that i would like to mention uh, we have close to 400 um, close to 500 people um, you know participating teams you might be wondering what if i'm not the winner or what if i'm the winner Based on my personal experience of hosting various hackathons, I believe every single participant who come and join the hackathon is a winner in itself because you have a lifelong learning which you achieve from this hackathon. Very quickly talking about the checkpoints. Um, checkpoint one would be on uh, 8 June 6 p.m., which is today evening. By this time, teams should be able to clearly present their idea, their objectives for the hackathon, and you should, be start, you should have started working on your minimum, minimum viable product. Checkpoint two would come tomorrow morning around 11 o'clock, which is 9th June. By this time, you should be able to show your progress on the MVP. Checkpoint three and the final checkpoint would be 9th June, 7 p.m. By this time, you should be able to show your final MVP and you should have started working on your deliverable, which is the final video. The final submission would take place at, on 10th June at 1 p.m., where each of you uh, as as team should upload an explanatory two minute video of the minimum viable product and share the link with us. Um, at this moment, I would also like to take the opportunity to thank our partners from across the world who have uh, joined hand with us to uh, be part of Future Proof Hackathon. Um, I would like to thank Unity. Um, for all of, all of you who know Unity, it's one of the largest tech platform in the world uh, using Unity. Some of the best games and technologies are being designed. Logical Indian, uh, one of the largest new media group uh, in the country. Uh, um, thank you so much for uh, their support. We have Government of Charkhand official entrepreneurship initiative called AB. IEL, ABBIL Innovation Lab, thank you so much for your support. We have AIC RNTU, one of the largest incubation uh, center from Madhya Pradesh joining us. They are also supported by Startup India. We have Girl Script Foundation. Um, it's a very, very interesting and innovative way to teach coding to young people in the country. Thank you, Girl Script. We have with us Kilenza, which is one of the largest um, hackathon for hiring platform. They have more than 10 lakh people, uh, primarily students using Skilenza platform to get jobs companies such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft, so on and so forth. 
Uh, we would like to thank our investment partner, uh, Venture Catalyst, which is world's number seven and India's number one angel network. We would like to thank Bengal Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is one of the oldest chamber in the country. Uh, we would also like to thank DigitalOcean for being our cloud partner. Thank you so much, DigitalOcean. We also have a lot of interesting offering from these partners. I would take a minute to talk about it. First of all, Offbeat CCU. Uh, the brightest winners of the Future Proof Hackathon 2020 will be the first cohort of the Future Proof Labs, which is ideally located in the Learning Hub Offbeat CCU on EM Bypass, Kolkata. Uh, we have support and offering from Technopreneur Surrogate Ventures. You would receive, the winning teams would receive incubation support on their idea and innovation. You would also receive cloud credits from partners such as Google, DigitalOcean, AWS. You would also get extensive mentoring support to all the eligible teams. Very quickly, uh, benefits from Unity, you would get, uh, the winning team will get a one hour unique masterclass on prototyping, universal render pipeline, game cinematicals, interaction and physics of game design, production services, and getting better at game development. Benefits from AIC RNTU, incubation, pre-incubation support based on the performance of participants, specific mentorship assistance, free credits for Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, Zoho, IBM, Message91, etc. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the partners for all the support and offering. I would request uh, Mr. Meghdoot Roy Chaudhary to kindly um, you know, uh, declare the event live. Meghdoot, over to you. Thank you so much, Ravi. Uh, actually, instead of me doing it, I would prefer that our chairman and the uh, ideator for the hackathon to uh, declare it open. But before that, I would like to mention something. Uh, you know, we belong to the new generation, as it's called. And uh, most of the time, uh, we, uh, we com keep comparing ourselves to the older generation and so and vice versa, right? The older generation would say, oh, these millennials nowadays, they do not uh, understand how the world works. We had it so much harder in our time. And we, uh, younger generations, just because we feel we are a bit more comfortable with technology, with the internet, uh, with using computers, we say, oh, our, the older generations don't really understand uh, how the world works, how the current world works anymore. And I think uh, just listening to our speakers before and listening to our chairman talking about his journey, uh, I think the time has come to really reconcile the differences between the old and the new, because at the end of the day, if we're talking about reimagining the post COVID world, we cannot imagine a world wherein the new and the old generations do not coexist. Uh, so for that matter, I would like to, uh, to like to wish that all of the participants of today's hackathon, uh, that you pay attention to all the things that your mentors say. Uh, the things that uh, all of the all of your vertical leads, all of your uh, lead coordinators, but also more importantly, the people at your homes. You understand. In order to understand the markets, you need to understand consumers, and there's no better way to understand consumers than to understand the people at your own homes. So, be it uh, your parents, be it your grandparents, be it your uh, people who work in your house, be people who you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, drivers, maids, whoever it is, uh, your help. Uh, whoever it is that you uh, uh, that you can learn from, there's something or the other to learn from everyone's life experience. And no matter, uh, there's there's no difference uh, in in the kind of work that people do. Doesn't matter if somebody's the CEO of an organization or works as a janitor in the organization. There's something to learn about the requirements uh, that you can use for your uh, for the ventures that you're building. Because at the end of the day, if it's not consumer facing you will not do very well. It's very important that you're able to reconcile that difference. Stop comparing yourselves to the old generations. Same way I would request the older generations to keep uh, faith on us, on the newer generation, mm -hmm. so that we can uh, together create some wonderful innovation and to uh, reimagine the post-COVID world as one which is, as Dr. Mukherjee said, and all of the speakers said, uh, is, is a lot more thoughtful, is a lot more empathetic and purpose-driven. So without uh, any further ado, I would request our chairman uh, and the ideator of this hackathon to declare uh, this hackathon and the Future Proof Labs by Techno India Group open. Thank you. I declare the proposed hackathon. Ravi, please, uh, if you could conclude the program, sure. I think that brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you so much, Meghdoot. Thank you so much, uh, Pauline. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Monashi Rai Chaudhary.
and thank you so much professor uh, dr gautam roy chaudhary uh, uh, i think this was a wonderful um, uh, opening ceremony one of its kind first of its kind we heard from you know eminent speakers from various walk of life uh, i request i would like to also take this opportunity to thank all the faculty members uh, all the support team and especially the participants who, have, who are joining from across the country i hope this would be one of the best experience of your life uh, i wish you all the best and request uh, everyone to start with the hackathon thank you so much